Saujanya, ma'am. Yes. Uh, shall I start, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, one more minute. One more minute. Okay. Fine. Yes. We can start. Yeah, ma'am. Good evening to all. I quote. Literature is one of the most interesting and significant expressions of humanity. It adds to reality. It does not simply describe reality. It enriches the necessary competencies that daily life requires and provides. And in this respect, it indicates the desert that our lives have already become. I unquote. Once again, a very good evening to one and all who have joined us today. I, Sindhu Shriyanes, from the Department of English, welcome you all for day one of two-day international faculty development program of English literature, social commitment and management lessons organized by Department of English and IQAC initiative. I request to all the participants kindly mute your mic. I request to all the participants kindly mute your mic. The topic for today's discussion, I feel, is very relevant because we all have seen how literature has gone through the shift from being art for art's sake to art for life's sake. SSMRV College is one of the famous institutions that come under RV group of institutions. Our college focuses on the holistic development of students and college also encourages faculties to enrich their knowledge levels too. In this regard, we have organized this FTP and I thank all of you for registering and I'm really happy to put forth that we have got 1012 registrations with six international registrations. Before passing on this virtual mic, here are a few instructions to participants. Please make sure you have a stable internet connection. You will have to mute your audio and video, please. If you wish to ask any questions, please use the message option, which will be visible on the screen. I request you all to keep it very professional and ask only questions related to the content of the talk. At the end of the session today and also tomorrow, feedback form link will be posted in the chat box and also will be sent to your WhatsApp group, which you all are part of. Certificates will be issued to the college uh, by the college to only registered participants who attend the session on both the days and submit the feedback form. E-certificate will be sent to your registered mail ID within four days after the FTP. Now, I request Mrs. Anusha Yen, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, for invocation song. Anusha, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, madam. Namaste. It's a crucial time for all of us to seek the divine blessings of Guru, the divine master. I am going to recite Guru Ashtakam, composed by Adi Guru Sri Shankaracharya. Let us all pray the divine master to grace the occasion and to protect the world from this pandemic. Shariram Surupam Tathavakalatram Yashashchadu Chitram Dhanam Nerutulyam Manashti Nalagnam Guru Rangri Padme Tata Kim Tata Kim Tata Kim Tata Kim Kalantram Dhanam Putra Pautra Di Sarvam Graham Bandhava Sarvam Etat Tejatam 
मनश्चेन लग्न गुरोरंघ्रि पद्मे तत किंत 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 षंगादिदेदो मुखे शास्त्र विद्या कवित्दि गद्यम सुपद्यम करोति मनश्चेन लग्न गुरोरंघ्रि पद्मे तत किंत किंत विदेशु मेषु धन्य सदाचार वृत्तु मत न मनश्चेन लग्न गुरोरंघ्रि पद्मे तत किंत 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 गुरोरष्टक पटे पुण्य यतिर्भूपतिर्ब्रह्मचारी चे लभे वाचिता पदम ब्रह्म संज्ञ गुरोक्तवाखे मनोयश लग्न ओ गुरुभ्यो नम धन्यवाद Thanks for the melody. It was really beautiful. Thank you, Anusha Madam. Now it's time to formally welcome the gathering. So I would like to request Mrs. Saujanya Divan, Head Department of English and Event Coordinator, to welcome the gathering formally. Thank you, Sundarshree. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A small cheer and a great welcome. makes a merry feast i saujanya divan head department of english and event coordinator would like to welcome our today's chief guest resource person dr basavaraj p donur professor and head department of english central university karnataka kalburgi welcome sir i would also welcome our another resource person for tomorrow professor imran mulla visiting scholar Cambridge University UK welcome sir a good principal always leads a good school having said so i would like to welcome our honorable principal dr s anil kumar to this international event welcome thank sir thank you and yes an individual commitment to a group effort that is what makes a team work I would welcome our organizing team, Dr. M. S. Nagaraj, Head Department of Commerce, Coordinator IQAC. Welcome, sir. I would also welcome Assistant Professor Jia Gokul, Department of Commerce, Member IQAC. Assistant Professor Shakila, Department of Commerce, uh, Member IQAC. Assistant Professor Shivakumara N, Department of Commerce. member iqac our own department people assistant professor sindhushree department of english uh, assistant professor harshita department of english assistant professor david sunil department of english scholars participants from various countries states and within ssmrv heads of various departments coordinators class teachers teaching and non teaching faculties I welcome you all for this wonderful gathering. Hope this evening will be a pleasant session for you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Saujanya, ma'am. Moving ahead, our dearest principal, Dr. S. Anil Kumar, sir. He is the main reason behind organizing this FTP. So now I request Mr. Shiv Kumar N, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, to introduce our principal, sir, to the gathering. Over to you, Shiv Kumar, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Am I audible, madam? Yes, sir. You are yes, audible, sir. Thank you. Thank you. An organization with good players keeps adding its success. An organization with good leaders keeps multiplying its success. Assistant Professor College has one of such good leader. He is none other than Dr. S. Anil Kumar. Good evening, all. It is both honor and privilege to introduce our beloved principal to this webinar. He is a situational leader. Visionary and author, he has M.Com and Ph.D. from Bangalore University and D.Lit 
from the University of Panama, USA. He has a four decades of teaching experience and more than two decades of research experience. He has guided more than six PhDs and 31 MPhils from various universities. Dr. Kumar published papers in various reputed journals. Dr. Kumar presented papers at Harvard University, USA, Griffith University, Australia, and so on. Dr. Kumar authored more than 30 books on various commerce and management subjects. Dr. Kumar is a member of Academic Council, Bangalore University, and other academic bodies. Adjudicator and member of Research Committee, Christ University. Advisory member of BBMP Roshni Project. He has been chairman of Board of Studies and Board of Examination of Bangalore University and other universities. The reflection of his hard work and commitment has transformed into various awards such as Dr. Kumar has been awarded in recognition of dedicated service as a teacher conferred by His Excellency Dr. Ansarath Bharadwaj, the then Governor of Karnataka organized by Rotary Bangalore South and Karnataka Civil Defence Corps. He has been awarded for achieving excellence in education from RSST. He has received Dr. Abdul Kalam Gold Medal Award from Global Economic Progress Research Association, New Delhi for individual achievement and distinguished service in education and research. He has been an NCC under officer and has won the Best Cadet Award. Dr. Kumar has been honored with Best Faculty Award for the academic excellency for the academic year 2020-21 by Avekananda College, Bengaluru. Dr. Kumar is a NAC peer team member who has visited various colleges across India as a part of NAC assessment. Dr. Kumar has been honored with Lifetime Achievement Award for his academic contribution in the arts and management under the category of commerce specialization for the year 2020-21 by Novel Research Academy, Puducherry, India. He has his own website called www.sanilkumar.com. Coming back to his key focus areas within SSMRV College, his academic innovations like innovations like the 360 degree education for wholeness model with six dimensional approach, setting up of 30 activity centers or all stronghold strategies which aims to take the SSMRV College to greater height. The direct impact of the same was our college getting A grade by NAC for the first time during its third accreditation cycle. It is with pride we are proud to mention that our students got many ranks and gold medals in the Bangalore University examinations. SSMRV College has recently been ranked fourth among the top five colleges in India for best value for money in the India Today MRDA survey from 2018, 2019, 2020 consecutively. The list is endless, but with due respect to time, let me contain my few words about Dr. S. Anil Kumar. I welcome you, sir, and I request you to address the gathering. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. <coughs> Good evening. All, uh, I would like to once again take this opportunity the eminent scholars today for the two-day organized by SSMRT, Dr. Basuraj P. Donu, Professor Mulla, uh, Imran Mulla. Welcome, sir. SSMRV College, the very reputed institutions in uh, which has a history of 80 years, a freedom fighter and SSMRV college is uh, uh, reputed and a very unique institution in, in its own way because it has its own model education model which is called as 360 degree education for wholeness model. In this model, we give importance for academics, skill enhancement, extracurricular activities, career development, ethics and governance, and also psychological well-being of the students. These are the six dimensions with which we have been working uh, sincerely 
from past seven years, and we have we were able to achieve our vision of holistic development. That's the reason today, SSMRV College is uh, one of the top five colleges in India for the my uh, best value for money. Why it is best value for for money? I'll just tell you. In our institution, in in the, according along with the academics, as per the university curriculum, we also equip them with the emerging technology enhancements through various uh, uh, programs. Uh, along will be given for each course. We run BCom, BBA, BBA Aviation, and BCA and the, in the School of Graduate uh, Education, and in the School of Postgraduate uh, uh, Education, we have MCom program. In all these programs, we have added some of the emerging technologies like the uh, the AI in marketing, AI, uh, then uh, digital marketing for BCom students and for BBA students. And then uh, for BCA students, it is uh, uh, AI in machine and machine learning. All these emerging technologies, which will definitely help our students in getting uh, placements and also to become entrepreneurs. So that is the uh, kind of um, an advantage of uh, being in SSMRV College. In addition to that, we we are also providing a lot of uh, personality enhancement programs through professionals and pre-placement training programs that is preparing them for aptitude, GD and interviews, etc. All these programs are mandatory. That is the highlight of this. All these programs are mandatory for students and it is provided free of cost. It is part of the curriculum. We have embedded these emerging technology programs, personality programs, and the pre-placement training programs along with their regular curriculum. So that helps them. And also we have added one more thing is we have added in all these emerging technology programs, internship as mandatory program. At the end of every year, we they have to go for an internship. So they get a hands-on hands experience uh, from the knowledge what they have gained through the skill, that is whatever the training they have got through these skill enhancement programs. So that is all the, it is mandatory and it is also the uh, part of the, uh, the fees, whatever which is there, that is free of cost, we can say. That, and we, in addition to this, the, for, the, for the holistic development, we have about 30 activity centers. It is like NSS, NCC sports. In addition to that, we have uh, the Red Cross, uh, Civil Defense, uh, the Eco Club, <clears throat> then Health Club, Theater Club, Radio Club, a lot of, lot of such programs. The main intention is here to provide opportunity for the students to, be, to, be, to become leaders. In the sense, they can organize all the programs. They will be handling all the events in, the, in, in, in their clubs. We call it as the activity center or activity clubs. So they, can, they, they from uh, inviting people and organizing. So they get organizing abilities, teamwork, leadership, uh, con and gain, gain confidence in this process. So these kind of initiatives and of course, career development, we give more maximum importance through profiling, career counseling, then a then lot of uh, training program which happens in our institution to enhance their employability capabilities. So apart from this, we give importance for the value system, ethics and, ethics and value systems. So we like, conduct a lot of lectures for the students to inculcate the value system in them and in it, with the present condition we have added one more dimension that is the psychological well-being of the students 
which is very very important especially during this pandemic that is very important so we have an excellent counseling team and we have tie up with counselors so they take care of their psychological well being of the students so all these six uh, dimensions are taken care of in our institution that's the reason today our uh, college has got Uh, accredited uh, a uh, accredited by nac with a grade then it is top five colleges and our course students have got lot of ranks and and uh, placed in very good uh, companies etc so i'm very really proud to say all these things because the this all this happened because of our uh, faculty the continuous effort of, of the uh, faculty members of the uh, college who who are there with the students along with the academic initiatives and also in the uh, the other initiatives of the college and as far as the seminars are concerned uh, especially we have been doing lot of seminars uh, even earlier uh, uh, that is physically but from past to one and a half years we have been doing lot of virtual uh, seminars conferences in at the national level and international level so a lot of the advantage of this is we were able to get very good speakers even from abroad so we had uh, speakers earlier from uh, seattle us we have here from um, uh, from the um, various other universities of various uh, uh, from different countries so that is the advantage and we were very, we are very very happy that our our uh, speakers the resource persons are responding to our invitation and that gives a lot of uh, encouragement for us uh, to organize many such programs in in our institution the highlight of today's program is one that is the resource persons one of the resource person dr basuraj p donor he is a well known academician and head of the department Uh, in the department of english uh, central university of karnataka kalburgi so he, uh, we are very happy sir we are once again i welcome you and one more eminent uh, speaker for tomorrow professor imran mulla the visiting scholar in cambridge university uh, united kingdom so this is uh, sir the, I, i i am very pleased to have you uh, for this program i think you are there today you joined uh, for the program and we'll i'm eager to listen to you tomorrow so i am i'm very happy that uh, both of you are uh, the you know experts in the in the in the field of english and will uh, really uh, give them lot of inputs to all the professors i think in this in this uh, seminar And not only professor uh, professors from uh, the department of english i think there are multidisciplinary people from other departments are also uh, there because it is uh, about social commitment and uh, management lessons both are there i am really happy uh, uh, that uh, and i came to know there are 1012 participants from 28 states i was just going through the uh, list actually it covers entire pan india so that is something which is uh, very important very interesting because all the uh, participants showed interest in our uh, seminar uh, and they have been uh, uh, be part of our programs in any of the programs minimum i think i tell you 500 to 600 used to be there this is a record number this is really a record number and with international participants also so this is uh, a kind of you know reputation what the ssmrv college has earned and and because of this kind of resource persons we have with us uh, uh, in all our programs so i am very uh, delighted and i would like to uh, congratulate and uh, appreciate the initiative taken by the department of english uh, ssmrv college the hod saujanya divan and the thank you sir thank you so much and team entire uh, team of uh, department of uh, english 
and the a coordinator of iqac dr nagaraj and technical team gokul and all the uh, faculty members as a team it is not just english department all the other department department commerce management all this uh, faculty members are involved in organizing this particular program so i appreciate their uh, initiative in this uh, on this occasion so once again i would like to welcome all the participants uh to this international webinar organized by ssmrv college thank you so much all the best thank you sir thank you so much uh thank you shiv kumar sir for introducing anil kumar sir to us and thank you anil kumar sir it's always pleasant hearing your words dear participants please note the recording of today's session and also tomorrow's session will be made available in our college youtube channel i request all of you to share the video with your friends and spread the knowledge today's resource person baswaraj donur sir was kind enough to take out his time out of his busy schedule to join us all today i request miss harshita aras assistant professor department of english to introduce baswaraj sir to us harshita go over to you good evening everyone namaste well i was assigned the task of interviewing am i audible hello yes harshita you are audible thank you very much so good afternoon good evening everybody when i was assigned the task of introducing the guest i only thought it would be like any other usual affair but when i went through sir's profile uh, i was proved the other way i was proved otherwise and i was wrong his achievements are sky high and ocean deep thus i am deeply privileged to inspire so many of you who are attending today's faculty development program donu sir i must say i shall be narrating if not all some milestones of your achievement till date kindly excuse me due to paucity of time i shall be sharing a birds eye view of your exhaustive profile dear participants Uh, today's program is scheduled to be addressed by Professor Basavraj P. Donor, the head, Department of English, and Dean, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Central University of Karnataka, Kalburi. His area of uh, specialization constitutes post-colonialism, translation, theater, poetics, creative writing, etc. Dear friends, Sir holds two doctoral degrees in two different languages. Sir holds a PhD in English from Karnataka University, Bharwar, and PhD in Kannada from Kannada University, Hampi. His professional career is equally unique and inspiring. He has a lot of academic accolades. He has started his career as a lecturer in the Department of English, Karnataka Un Karnataka Arts College, Bharwar, and has started. and has come a long way until 2021 he has worked in three universities karnataka university bharwar karnataka state women's university vijayapura and central university of karnataka karnataka kalburi he has held various academic and um, administrative positions like be being member of the boa bos boe of various universities in karnataka and across the country to name a few indira gandhi national tribal university amar kantak Rani Chennamma University, Belagavi, etc. Now coming to Sir's contribution to the world of literature, to the literary world, he is a renowned critic, a short story writer, poet, novelist, and a translator. Sir has published several books on criticism. The poetry of Basavanna and Hoop Kings, a, a comparative study, was recently published in 2020 by Studra Press in New Delhi. he has penned many poems and short stories his recent publication uh, uriva kendra the mele was published in 2019 he he has translated dr manu baligar's work in kannada to english under the name my father and sir has been working immensely in uh, translating various other languages into english works of various other languages into english he has also edited books and journals he is the editor and reviewer of reputed journals he has contributed chapters in noted journals books and has presented various national and international conferences he has undertaken ugc sponsored minor and major research projects and has been lauded by the academia his works are widely read and prescribed aspects for ug and pg students of universities gulbarga darwad and uh, belagavi 
he is also a very active person on audio visual media he has given several interviews on doordarshan and all india radio he has visited oxford university cambridge university oh his profile runs long but i restrict myself here without further ado sir i request you to take charge of this session professor p donur here is the platform please sir thank you one and all good evening to you k uh, am i audible yes sir you are audible okay thank you first of all i thank my colleague in uh, sskmrv college for uh, speaking very nice words about me by way of introduction Dr. S. Anil Kumar, principal of uh, SSMRV College, uh, Solution Media, my student at Karnataka uh, Arts College, Lahore, and currently working as the head of the department of uh, English at uh, SSMRV uh, College. My colleagues working in the in this college and uh, my dear participants. Professors, scholars, faculty members, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I agreed to speak on the topic literature and uh, social responsibility today, uh, mainly because uh, I was uh, uh, contacted by my student, uh, Sarjana Diwan. It's very difficult for me to say no to my student. So it's, it's because of uh, Sarjana. I'm here with you today. Uh, this, uh, this Thank evening. you, sir. Uh, I am currently working as uh, not as the head of the department uh, right now, as the dean of the School of Humanities and Languages and director of the academics and also rest of uh, Central University of Karnataka. It's a it's a very hectic schedule, and I couldn't say no to her, and I prepared my speak my lecture in a great hurry. Let me see whether I can do justice uh, to the topic, and whether I don't know whether I will, I will live up to your expectation or, or not. I am basically a, a teacher of English. Uh, you, you can call a professor of English, whether a professor or associate or assistant professor. We're all basically teachers. So I would say I am a teacher of English, and I'm also a writer. And uh, I um, uh, I I keep thinking about um, literature and uh, the relation between uh, literature and society, uh, etc. And today I confine my presentation only to this topic, literature and uh, social responsibility. Or I can make slight modification, literature and society, or literature and uh, uh, social change. So uh, I'm uh, uh, informed that I have uh, 50 to 60 minutes to, minutes to speak. Then we can have interaction. We can I can have interaction. Okay. So uh, I divide my lecture into two parts. In the first part of my lecture, I will be speaking about the relation between literature and society. I may refer to some major. Uh, um, you know, thinkers and uh, critics who have uh, extensively. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you turn off the fan behind? Sorry, what? sir. Sorry. Okay. Sorry uh, to interrupt you. No, no, no problem. Am I am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there's no disturbance at all from no, my side. Sir, no disturbance. No, sir. No disturbance. Thank you. Thank you. Because I don't want to disturb anybody in the world. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was uh, uh, telling you about the structure of my presentation today. In the first part of my lecture, I would be um, discussing some important observations made by the uh, 
uh, theorists and uh, thinkers and critics about the relationship between uh, literature and uh, society. And in my second part of in the second part of my lecture, I'll be giving you uh, some examples uh, uh, in, in support of the arguments that I discussed in the first part of my lecture. I'll be giving you some examples from uh, British literature or American literature, Russian literature and Indian literature as well as uh, Kanda literature, which is my mother tongue. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, you know, uh, from time immemorial, um, uh, you know, we have been we have been thinking about the possible relationship between literature and uh, and and society. Whether there is any you know whether there is any kind of relationship between these two or whether there is no relation, or should there be relation or shouldn't be any relation between literature and society? These are the questions which we have been thinking about and uh, the critics and uh, uh, thinkers have been think have been discussing these very important uh, questions from time immemorial uh, down to the present day so i will start my discussion with uh, plato and aristotle and you all know that they were the they were the first major european thinkers of socrates Socrates was the first major European uh, thinker. He set the ball rolling. You know, he was the one who started uh, thinking very critically about uh, the society, he, about uh, religion, and about God and uh, man God relationship, and about uh, power, power structure, uh, systems, uh, social system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And Plato was his student. Plato was Aristotle's student, and uh, Plato in his Republic uh, very extensively, uh, very candidly talks about uh, the relationship between literature and society. So Plato was an idealist. He was an idealist. He was a philosopher and he was an idealist. He wanted to establish uh, a Republic, you know, a Republic, uh, I can say, that there is, uh, we can draw, uh, you know, a point of similarity between uh, um, ideal republic of uh, Plato and uh, our own concept of Ramaraja. Yeah? Ramaraja means republic, Plato's republic, ideal republic. And I don't have to explain to you what Ramaraja, the concept of Ramaraja. Okay, so everybody in my state should be happy. If all people in my state in my country are happy, then I can say it is Ramaraja that I have established. And Plato wanted to, you know, establish this ideal uh, republic and he bans the poets from his republic. I do not give any space to writers, you know, poets in my proposed, proposed republic. You do not have, you, you don't have to play any role in my ideal republic. You don't have place at all. I will ban you. I will ban you. And he gives the reason why he wanted to ban the poets from his ideal republic. Why he didn't want the poets to live in his ideal republic. He said that uh, uh, poets would, uh, uh, would, would uh, appeal to uh, the base human emotion. The base means the ordinary uh, trivial, silly, uh, you know, human emotion. We all know that we man has so many kinds of emotions, you know, very trivial emotion, very ordinary emotion, very great emotion, and uh, ideal emotion like that. So literature, poetry appeals to this very trivial, ordinary emotions. And uh, it can, it can, uh, poetry can also, you know, uh, derail the citizens, misguide the people, and take the people away from the path, path of enlightenment. Plato said, I want to, I want to take my people to the abode of God. I want to take you to heaven. But the poets with their uh, imagination and with their images and with their uh, 
stories and so on will bind you to the earth. You will be fixed on the earth permanently. But I want you to take. I want to take you to to heaven. You know, to to the about uh, God. And then he also said that poets imitate nature. You know, uh, as 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 it is. This is the point of difference between uh, Plato and, uh, uh, and and Aristotle. Remember, Plato was Socrates' uh, Socrates' student, and Aristotle was Plato's student, and Alexander the Great was Aristotle's student. It's a great addition. Is you know, from Aristotle, uh, from uh, Socrates to Alexander the Great. It's a great addition. In the European uh, civilization, European history. So uh, Plato said, "No, you don't have a uh, place. I, I, I ban you from my ideal republic." Then, then Aristotle came on the scene and he said to his guru, "No, it's not. It's not correct. It, it's it's wrong on, on on your part to say that poets appeal only to uh, base human emotions." I differ from you. I beg to differ from you. Then he said, he, he defined uh, imitation. So literature imitates life in three ways. Number one, as it is. Number two, as it were. Number two, as it was. Number two, as it should be and as it ought to, to be. This is what he said. Number two, Aristotle also said. Aristotle also said uh, that uh, literature does not merely imitate; it is not copying. No, poet's mind. A poet's mind is not a Xerox machine. A poet's mind is an, is not a Xerox machine. It is not a photocopying machine. You know, it's a living mind. It is a living mind. It's an active mind. It's a creative mind. That's very important. Create your mind. So Aristotle said, a poet does not merely reproduce; he will also recreate, recreate, recreation. There is some disturbance. I request the organizers to address this disturbance. Yeah. <clears throat> so the uh, literature does not copy, does not copy, does not me merely copy. It will reproduce. It will not merely reproduce. It will recreate. So it has the power to recreate. It can show you the. It can not just show the world as it is. For example, if I am a poet, if when I write a poem, it is about the reality which you see, which anybody can see. Why should you be reading my poem at all? Hmm? Why? Why do you go to uh, Pablo Neruda? Why do you go to Shakespeare? Why do you go to Milton? Why do we read uh, Kalidas or Tolstoy, Puttapa, you know, Kuvempu, Bendre? Because they say something which we do not know, which I do not know. Okay, and they they give us an impression of a society about which we don't know. That's a different kind of society. You know, it's more inspiring. The the world of Shakespeare is more inspiring than the real world. Go to England, and again visit England as it is presented in his plays. Go to London, and also see London in his uh, in his uh, dramas. So those two Londons are different. I may write about Bangalore. I may write about Kalaburki. But Kalburgi, as it is, as a city, Kalburgi as a city, you know, is entirely different from Kalburgi, you know, as a town in my fiction. This is something which we need to we need to understand. So, I will end the discussion here. Plato and Aristotle. So, Plato, you know, corrected the uh, uh, Plato gave the correct version of uh, uh, what literature really is. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so from uh, Aristotle, I will, uh, you know, uh, take a long jump and come to Edward Said, 
and uh, Terry Eagleton, you know, the very important uh, um, modern uh, post-colonial uh, thinkers. One is Marxist and second one is uh, post-colonial thinker, Edward Said, Edward Said. So Edward Said in his uh, uh, contents in the world, the text and the critic, this is the title of the uh, long, long essay by Edward Said. So in this uh, essay can, uh, titled The World, the Text and the Critic, Edward Said contends that the inevitable trajectory of uh, critical consciousness is to arrive at some acute sense of what political, social and human values are entailed in the reading, production and transmission of every text. This is an important uh, uh, statement by uh, Edward Said, which I want all the participants, especially young um, research scholars, to pay their attention to. And we all read literature, but uh, reading is 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 an art. Reading is a skill. You know, with what objective you read literature will decide the nature of your reading, and the nature of what you would like to find in the work of art. So when you read a novel with a certain expectation in his mind, then you will have uh, the clear cut outcome. Otherwise, you just uh, enjoy the story of the, uh, the plot of the novel or the plot of the poem, epic or the plot of the play, that's all. Now, Edward Said talks about uh, you know, uh, he talks about uh, the necessity, the necessity to to find out the political, social, and human values which are involved, which are entailed in the reading, production, and transmission of every you know text. When you read a text, you will have to pay attention not only to the beauties, not only to the aesthetic. Uh, uh, aspects of a uh, work of art, but also to other dimensions, political dimension, social dimension, historical dimension, and about humanity, human values, uh, etc. Then only you, you, you understand. And uh, this he calls critical consciousness. Critical consciousness. In other words, Edward Said wants all of us to not to read literature from a traditional perspective from a traditional perspective from just one perspective single perspective okay you read a work of art from different perspectives and one of the perspectives one of the lenses the lens with which you look at reality is very important so your lens you know should be society or social change or social commitment literature and society I mean the the writer and and society whether a writer has any social responsibility or not whether a writer has some kind of social responsibility or not as students of literature as teachers of English literature any literature for that matter all of us know very well that some writers agree and some writers don't agree some say yes there should be relationship between literature and society and some writers say they need not be need not be they are two different uh, entities they are two different uh, uh, activities altogether so we have two different versions of the of the of the truth so i will go back to edward said uh, again uh, if time permits and if it is uh, required i only would uh, say that yes uh, when you read a work of art and you should have this perspective in uh, in mind today i make a very sincere attempt to read some texts indian western uh, russian and uh, so on from this perspective from the perspective of society from the perspective of social change or from the perspective of a social commitment and uh, terry eagleton an important critic uh, and every teacher of english should read at least one book uh, by Terry Eagleton. Uh, he's a Marxist critic. 
and uh, he has a book called uh, literary theory uh, an introduction in which he talks about uh, discourse theory and cultural studies discourse theory and cultural studies and he also uh, tells us uh, how we can read a, a text to understand the relationship between uh, literature and society and literature and other uh, dimensions and other um, you know aspects and we also have the concepts like uh, uh, art for art's sake and uh, art for uh, uh, life's sake so this art for art's sake uh, it expresses the philosophy that the intrinsic value of art and the only to art is divorced from any didactic moral political and utilitarian function art for art's sake so why do you write i i write because because i love writing you know i write because i love writing i write because uh, the writing the act of writing pleases me i write because i try to give a sort of expression to my own ideas and thoughts my feelings my happiness my unhappiness my suffering etc etc i don't deny this every artist does this not just uh, a poet or a novelist every artist does this you know i draw your attention to what um, he usually uh, uh, writes in uh, his poem uh, o to the west wind i fall upon thorn i bleed i fall upon thorns i bleed you know so this is uh, an expression he says this is an expression of my personal anguish you know this is the expression of my personal anguish this is the expression of my personal suffering and what i suffer i write and uh, uh, you know this process of writing will give uh, will help me to come out of this anguish personal anguish personal loss so i fall upon thorn and uh, i bleed he also writes the sweetest songs are those that tell the saddest uh, that, that tell the saddest thoughts the sweetest songs are those that tell or that tell less to the saddest th thoughts as a student of literature i'm sure that you all i'm sure that you all know that the sweetest what you call sweet in literature is is an expression of uh, sad what is what you call sad becomes sweet in literature why do we like tragedies you know we like more tragedies than 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 comedies all masterpieces all masterpieces in european literature are, are tragedies right uh, you take the example of uh, sophocles i do take the example of uh, marlowe or um, shakespeare himself you know why i will come back to this question uh, uh, later so this is this this is what art for our sake theory uh, you know states or it uh, it stands for this it doesn't basically believe in uh, in uh, didactic didacticism that is uh, in, in in preaching part of it and it doesn't you know uh, believe in uh, Uh, in preaching moral values political values or any utilitarian values but uh, a, a critic like uh, edward said or t g you know uh, yeah, eagleton and others they deny this all socialist communist marxist uh, post colonial uh, critics and writers even feminist critics okay marginal uh, writers marginal writers minority writers they all deny this because they deny the mainstream uh, the canonical literature they they deny the canonization of literature the canonization canonization of intellectual intellectuality all intellectual mainstream intellectual discourses uh, uh, they, they deny they are look for alternative culture that's very important alternative culture alternative culture is possible is possible and uh, Uh, uh and 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 a writer should uh, uh, should explore the possibilities of uh, of exploring 
alternative cultures, alternative languages, and alternative belief systems, uh, etc. Then the French philosopher Victor uh, Cousin, uh, he coined the word uh, for uh, uh, life's sake, art for life's sake. So this talks about, uh, you know, it, it talks about the social responsibility of an artist. An artist also has uh, uh, his own social responsibility, his commitment to society. Literature should be committed to society committed to social change. I think I will have to explain what I mean by this. So let us try to understand the, the nature of relation between literature and society. So literature should give us aesthetic pleasure. When you read literature, you should be thoroughly pleased. Okay? And you should be thoroughly entertained. Why should you read a, read a poem? Uh, if it is very, if it is very boring, if it doesn't entertain you, if it doesn't please you, if it doesn't appeal to your heart and your soul and your mind, your emotions, etc., why should you read it? Why should you watch a movie? Why should you watch a, you know, a play? Basically, they entertain us. They entertain us, and they enlighten us. Enlightenment, entertainment, and enlightenment. And these critics say, like Edward Said, Eagleton, and uh, others, it's not just entertainment or enlightenment. It should also create a sort of awareness in the mind of the reader about the social system, social system, and about society, and about the structure of society. You should be made, you know, you should, when you, when you read your part, you should also, you, you think of God, you think of uh, uh, divine power, you think of, so, you also think of society and the structure of the society. Yes, there are problems in, there are problems with, the, with my society. We have the caste system, we have the class system, okay, and there is, there are dichotomies, there are dichotomies to be, which need to be addressed. And everything is not fine. Everything is not fine. You know, a philosopher can say, yes, yes, everything is fine. All are happy. Yes, there is COVID. There is COVID pandemic. Uh, I don't recognize COVID pandemic. There is no COVID pandemic. But people are people are getting hospitalized in, la in a large number. People die. You know, people die. And the way, the manner in which dead bodies are taken to the graveyard and are buried is, is, uh, uh, is, is not only puzzling, is terrible, horrible. I, I never watch uh, TV, TV news at all after this pandemic, uh, uh, COVID pandemic started. So, as a writer, as a writer, yes, you will have to create, it's, it's also your duty to create a sort of awareness. People should, yes. They should know, they should know the, they should know what is happening in their society, what is happening in my society, what is happening in my, in, in my state, in my country. I will draw your attention to a very um, powerful, uh, uh, you know, dialogue spoken in um, Shakespeare's uh, Hamlet, Hamlet. Um, and I think it's, it's Horatio who says, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. I'm, I'm, I'm taking you to Shakespeare only to make you understand how a writer like Shakespeare can also talk about society in a subtle way. He says, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Remove Denmark, add Karnataka, it makes sense. Something is rotten in the state of Karnataka, right? Remove Karnataka, add your university, your college, my university, my college, it also makes sense. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark, in the state of Karnataka, in India, in, in Karnataka University. In, I did not take any particular name, which is not good. It makes sense. Then it's who should, if, if something is rotten, who should correct it? If there is a disorder, if there is anarchy, if there is violence, who should correct it? In the Hamlet, uh, 
Hamlet asks, uh, uh, you know, asks a question to himself. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite. Was I ever born to set it right? Very important question he asks. Very important question. Time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite. Was I ever born to set it right? Yes, something is rotten in the, st in the state of Denmark. Something has gone wrong. And who should correct it? Am I born? He asked this question. Was I ever born to set it right? I have my own individual life. I have my own desire. I'm in love with Ophelia. I have my personal commitment. I have also made a commitment to my father's ghost. So what should I do? But, you know, having said this, he also makes his own plan to correct uh, Denmark, his own city. So this is, you know, this is what a writer should, uh, should do. He should draw their attention to their own social problem or rather not just problem, the structure of society, the problems. Edward Said attacks on the 19th century British fiction, how they are colonial in nature. Even, you know, we appreciate Shakespeare. Okay, Shakespeare happens to be my very favorite, uh, uh, favorite, uh, favorite writer. I like Shakespeare and, uh, and Tolstoy. Less Shakespeare and Tolstoy and our uh, book. Okay. So, this 19th century British novelists try or try to support, uh, strengthen the colonial power, British colonial power. British Samrajya Shahi colonial power, right? And you can you can analyze uh, uh, you know even uh, some Kanda novels. You'll find that yes, the, the 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 characters in certain novels try to strengthen the social uh, structure, the belief system, the traditional uh, belief system, this hierarchy. And a writer like Kuwempu breaks it. I will talk about it later. And I also draw your attention to, to a statement. You know, some years ago, maybe some 15, 20 years ago, I met and uh, I heard a talk by by a very famous Indian uh, theater director. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Yeah, it, it was in Darwart. He was uh, giving a that he was giving a lecture. In his lecture, he made this statement. And um, this was the beginning of his uh, lecture. He said, I shall not direct a play unless it has some relevance to my contemporary society. I shall not direct a play unless it has some relevance to my contemporary society. He, that is his commitment to, that is his commitment to theater. I will not do theater. I don't do theater. <coughs> if I cannot connect this to society. You know? My people should be interested. They should be interested in their own society, their own society. And Brecht is also a, a very famous uh, German uh, playwright and uh, theater pundit. Uh, he also writes, uh, he also makes a statement for uh, to Brecht. A theater which a theater which does not establish a living contact with the public is a nonsense. <laughs> he calls it nonsense. A theater which does not establish a living contact with uh, uh, with the public is a nonsense. So you should have, you should establish a living contact with uh, with your audience, and a lot of our theater fails here. Please, you know, if I write a play and my play <coughs> doesn't, you know, if, if, I, if I'm not able to connect myself through my play with the society, <coughs> with the audience, then it is no play at all. If, if I, I'm, a, I'm a theater uh, artist, I'm doing theater, if uh, my theater doesn't connect, doesn't establish a living relationship with the society, it is nonsense.
So I want you to pay your attention to these two statements, one Brecht and the other by uh, an eminent Indian, uh, uh, Indian, uh, Indian playwright. I also draw your attention to, um, uh, to John Keats' uh, lines. I don't know how I can connect this to, uh, to my topic. I will, I will see later. Heard melodies are uh, sweet, but those unheard sweeter. If you read Indian literature, um, not just Kandal literature, any literature for that matter, OK? And until 1930s and 40s, all you know, you know, all our writers, or most of our writers, have uh, uh, most of our writers made a very serious attempt to present, you know, the traditional uh, way of life in their fiction and uh, uh, in, in their in their plays. It started in 1930s, you know, when progressive movement started in India, progressive movement and Navya movement, modernist movement. And in the case of Kanda, Bandaya movement and the Dalit movement, okay, and these new literary movements, which started uh, after 1930s in India, in general and in Karnataka in particular, uh, we started thinking very loudly about the relationship between literature and society. Yes, literature should have some kind of social, uh, uh, social uh, commitment, social commitment and uh, uh, social. Uh, um, responsibility. Now, <clears throat> I will ask two questions, and uh, and I try to give uh, answers to these questions. Um, my first question is: Can literature uh, um, change society? Can literature change society can a poet can a poet can a playwright can a novelist bring about some kind of positive change in our social system social setup can we make our readers can a writer make his readers through his writing to think uh, differently about his own society about his own culture about his own way of life and uh, and make him understand that everything is not fine something is rotten in the uh, state of uh, uh, Denmark or in the state in, in your own society this is the question and I do not have an exact answer to this question because I have been trying for a long time to find an answer to this but I definitely <coughs> don't say no I definitely don't say no. Literature does cause some kind of social change. Literature, art, drama, even film, which we call popular culture, it comes under popular culture, film and, and television, etc. All forms of uh, uh, entertainment, you know, they also lead to some kind of change. What kind of change do they bring about is, uh, is, is, is one more question, which we will discuss uh, uh, later. Now, I said I would definitely, I would not definitely say no to this question. Yes, literature, you know, literature um, uh, causes some kind of social change. It's possible. It's possible for a writer. It's also possible for literature as a whole. I give you uh, some two, three examples in next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Tolstoy uh, is, is an important uh, modern uh, uh, world writer. He's one of the makers of modern world literature. I call him, I call Tolstoy one of the most important writers of uh, uh, important makers of modern world, modern world literature an important russian writer i will not discuss his novels uh, those three four five big novels i will in short in two three minutes i will discuss his very famous very famous short story i'm sure uh, you all have read it if you have not read it you please go home and read this this is just about 
seven to eight page uh, short story. How much land does a man need? How much land does a man need? I'm sure you, if you give this story to 20 rich people, I'm sure that at least one of the 20 rich people, rich persons will undergo a change, will undergo a metamor uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a big change, will turn into uh, into a better a better man. He will become uh, second Tata. I'm, I'm I'm told that you know uh, he he does a lot of social service. You know, even Infosys uh, uh, lady also does a lot of social uh, social service. How much land does a man need? Remember, uh, Tolstoy was one of the richest men of his time. Richest men of his time. And uh, you know, um, uh, you know, at one stage he also became a socialist. Socialist. And when he became a socialist, before he could write this very famous story, he had uh, uh, some three to four estates of his own, about uh, 250 acres. 250 acres of uh, estates he had. He was one of the richest men of his uh, time, and he gave away. He gave away. This is the reason why his wife didn't like him at all. No wife would love you. No wife would love her husband if he gives everything to somebody. <laughs> Wives don't, don't like. So if you want to give some gift, never tell your wife that you are giving some gift. <laughs> they don't allow you. <laughs> okay. So uh, Tolstoy, you know, he gave away. He gave away his property to his tenants, his lands to his tenants. Then he wrote this uh, uh, this story. I just take two minutes. And the protagonist of this story, the main character in this story, uh, you know, uh, back home, uh, he is a farmer. Uh, you know, he wants to have more land. What is the desire of a farmer? He loves land and he wants to have more land. I will not tell you the whole story. Please read the story. And he has, he collects some money, you know, he collects some money and uh, he goes to, he goes to a person and uh, tells him, with this money, can I buy some land? He says, with this money, you buy very less land in this town. If you go to the next town, with this money, you buy more. He goes there and that man says, you go to the next village where you, you can buy with uh, this money more land like that. He moves one from one place to another. Then at, la at the end, he goes to one one village and meets the uh, headman, the you know Bashkis. They call it the Bashkis, the chief, the chief of the village. He goes and uh, he tells him, uh, "Sir, this is my name, and uh, I have learned that uh, land in your uh, town is very very cheap, and I have this money with me. Can you can you give me land?" Then the owner says, "No." what you have heard is true what you have learned is true we have a lot of land and there are no farmers to cultivate the land and we don't want money you can take you can take as much land as you can sir you tell me how can i, I take my land see tomorrow uh, tomorrow morning morning around six o'clock you come to a small hill outside outside the village okay then, uh, then I will tell you, you know, you, you take out your cap and put it on a, on some small uh, stone bench or on uh, some rock. Then you start running towards one direction. And the area that you cover from morning till evening will be yours. The area that you cover from sunrise to sunri sunset is yours. Then he says, what a great idea what a great idea what a great man what a noble man and i have to only walk and cover the distance and at an appointed time he goes there and he keeps his cap on the uh, he they go to a hill and they they go to the top of the hill and he keeps his uh, hat uh, on uh, some small some uh, rock and uh, he starts running for the whole day he runs no rest, no food. He neither drinks nor eats and, and nor takes rest. And he just walks on and on, on and on. 
and he reaches a point and <coughs> keeps something there as a mark of recognition and starts coming back and uh, by the time uh, and uh, when he comes back around 5 o'clock he comes very near the hill but he has not reached the point from where he has started and it becomes dark it, be, it it becomes dark and he's so upset oh my god i have lost everything everything is in vain because i couldn't reach the place before the sunset then this uh, the the village headman the chief the you know you know bashkis who is standing on the top of the hill shouts at him you know please come come back it is not at sunset the sun has not set here i am on the top of the hill okay if you come back you can reach the point then he is very happy he starts running and he comes running and he and he he reaches the point he reaches the point and when he reaches the point as soon as he reaches he falls down and dies he vomits blood and dies because of fatigue because of tiredness because of frustration because of tension and heartbeat this and that he dies when he dies his servant he has a servant his servant comes and and uh, uh, and and uh, <clears throat> he picks up the spade and digs a gra uh, grave long enough for pehom to lie in and he's buried there then he makes a statement 6 feet from his head to his uh, heels was all he needed you know my dear man at the end of the day when you die how much land do you need to get buried from from your feet you know 6 feet from your head to your heels is all you want it you requ you require you don't require 1000 acres of land i say why can't you give this story all the landlords of this country modern landlords or politicians you know so called or rich people and i'm sure that if he reads with uh, if he applies his mind his emotions and feelings and reads it it will have some impact on him and tolstoy <coughs> he distributed his land <coughs> among his uh, tenants before he before he wrote this uh, uh, this the, uh, uh, this this story but it is very unfortunate that a lot of socialists in our country how became how become millionaires proropathies you know how do you explain this you know a writer becoming a millionaire millionaire and uh, there is a small uh, country in uh, europe uh, latin american country chile chile small country chile you know um chile produced one of the brilliant modern minds pablo neruda pablo neruda i want all my students i mean uh, scholars to read this uh, pablo neruda's poem my dog died tonight i can write one of the poems which made a tremendous influence on me i love teaching this poem to my students tonight i can write so tonight you can read this poem you know this man you know he was also a socialist and lorca you know he was also a socialist and he was killed lorca was killed and uh, pablo neruda um, and his uh, his commitment to society you know, he says go back you know, i will i am i am with people i am with people forget pablo neruda you take the example of lord buddha his commitment to society social change so lord buddha is the first major indian philosopher uh, you can you can also call him yogi to talk about uh, relationship between religion and reality he didn't go to he went to the forest and when he got enlightenment he came back to society to serve he served society there is a brilliant essay in kannada by p lankesh one of the most powerful modern kannada um, uh, um, writers you know 
ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಹುಡುಕುತ್ತಾ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಹುಡುಕುತ್ತಾ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ಬಂಧನದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಹುಡುಕುತ್ತಾ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ಬಂಧನದಲ್ಲಿ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಏನೋ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ದಿ ಟೈಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಬಟ್ ಏನೋ ಕಿಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಹುಡುಕುತ್ತಾ ಪ್ರೀತಿಯ ಬಂಧನದಲ್ಲಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಲ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ ಮೆನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವುಮೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ ಕಂಪನಿ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಮಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ಓಷನ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಎ ಡಾಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ 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 ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಾಗ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ವಿ ಮೆನ್ ಲವ್ ಡಾಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೆನಿ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಲೌ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಲೌ ಮೈ ಡಾಗ್ ಟು ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅದರ್ ಡಾಗ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ and a dog is happy with other dogs a tiger is happy is happy with other uh, you know dogs this is the reason why environmentalists and animal lovers they say uh, they say no to circus company and uh, all that you allow them to live in their natural uh, environment okay so then 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 literature which directly deals with life <coughs> which directly deals with society which directly deals with the social system etc how can how can a writer say that i i do not have uh, any social uh, uh, responsibility or uh, i don't have any uh, commitment to to, uh, to to society so he cannot say no to uh, society now i will give another uh, one or two examples then uh, uh, call it a day <coughs> okay uh i will also i i would like to draw your attention again to terry eagleton then give two examples and uh, call it a day eagleton makes clear that the liberal purpose of uh, understanding a text is not quite enough there must be goals for the use of the critical act in constituting an alternative culture so you must talk about an alternative culture for instance for those who have been excluded from the dominant culture you know you will have to uh, constitute an alternative culture for whom an alternative culture for the people who have been excluded from the dominant culture this should be the objective of literature and that speaks volumes about the social commitment and social responsibility i will give you two examples from uh, um, from kannada literature uh, remember kannada literature is one of the um, one of the most vibrant literatures uh, in uh, in the whole uh, in the whole india i'm very happy that uh, we have produced the best uh, uh, so many uh, writers in in in, in kannada and shuram karanth is one one of the most brilliant uh, um, kannada novels and his uh, novels can be read in english they are available in english uh, like marali marali mannike chomas dram chomana duti chomas dram mm. now <clears throat> i will also give you the example of uh, chandrashekhar kamba uh, the latest agnanpeet uh, awardi and he is also chairman of uh, um site at kendra site academy new delhi major kannada a major kannada living novelist poet and playwright i'll give I'll, i'll give you an example of a play and uh, and, a, and a novel uh chandrashekhar kambar's play tukrana kanasu in kannada tukrana kanasu in english tukra's dream and who is tukra tukra uh he doesn't say the play doesn't say that he is an untouchable but he definitely belongs to a a a, a depressed section he is from a depressed class a depressed class right and he has a dream and what is his dream that i should go to a town and learn some english dress well comb my hair okay and uh, earn some money and come back to my village 
and live like a gowda village village head bunny okay remember i am only giving an example for uh, terry eagleton's uh, um, statement that uh, that we should uh, constitute an alternative um, alternative culture uh, for the people who have been excluded from mainstream uh, society and tukra does not belong to uh, the mainstream and chandrashekhar kambar uh, in a casual discussion with me said uh, look um if uh, if uh, tuglak is karnad's classic tukra is my classic you know karnad has a national hero yeah Tug tuglak is a national character and tuk i mean uh, tuglak is a national character and tukra is a local character you know this so local national there is an alternative alter he's 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 looking for an alternative discourse alternative uh, culture and tukra is giving is 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 issuing a challenge he is challenging gauda and when the play begins i i take just one or two minutes when the play begins gauda wants to write the history of his family you know he has called a historian write the history of my family and tukra also goes there and he tells uh, gauda uh, uh, i also would like to have the history of my family written gauda asks who is your father you first tell me who is your father he says no your father is my father which is true this is true because i i am fatherless my father my mother had an affair with your father so i was born your father is my father and he is beaten up he speaks truth and he is he is beaten up then uh, gauda is in love with, uh, um, uh, with with a with a school teacher i, I don't remember her name pari or something you know and uh, <coughs> uh, tukra goes to her uh, that the school teacher now i would like to, i know i i would like to love you 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 love me then uh, she asks him how can i love you and he says why do you love gauda gauda is smart yes i am smart gauda speaks sensible uh, in, you know he speaks well i have learned language i can also speak gauda has many i do have many i can sing i can dance i have many you love me right and uh, if you read uh, shakespeare's play uh, the tempest and uh, ariel there is one more caliban caliban says he i want to marry your daughter you know caliban is uh, he's he asks his master master you know i want to marry you marry your daughter then prospero takes uh, caliban to task and caliban uh speaks uh, a visual language and prospero asks i have i have i have taught you english and he says you have taught me english i know how to abuse you in english you know the britishers have taught us english and we are using this language to attack the british the british colonialism okay so this is this is something very important as far as my Uh, as far as i am concerned okay alternative um, constituting alternative uh, alternative culture and the last example today i would be giving from uh, shuram karan's uh, novel chumas drama i am uh, i am unhappy with the critics who attack the novelist for not giving land to a dalit in the in, 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 in the novel i don't have time to uh, talk about this uh, power politics today i beat you some other time and we can uh, we can discuss so choma in the in the novel it's a short novel but one of the most powerful novels written in modern kannada literature choma stream just 100 pages so choma uh, who is a dalit and uh, who is untouchable uh, who belongs to the west uh, section wants to have his own land to cultivate that is his desire before i die i should i should have some land to cultivate and the the gauda who is a brahmin in the in the in the novel master he is not gauda he is master who is a brahmin and very very um, progressive very progressive very sympathetic and very kind hearted man is a kind hearted man and he wants to give some land to choma so that he can cultivate and he says yes um, my my dear master 
there is pleasure in cultivating my land i should tell the world look i too have some a piece of land of my own in my village where which i can cultivate and, and i can grow and i can sleep and i can you know i can die one day get buried in my own uh, own land then it so happens at the end of the novel that uh, the mother of the master does not allow her son you know, does not consent she doesn't give her consent to her son to give away a piece of land to uh, choma so choma doesn't get the land at all so when the novel ends he starts beating his drum dudi dudi means drum it's highly symbolical you know it's it's an image it's a metaphor it's an it's an it's an excellent metaphor so at the end of the novel novel ends when he starts beating the drum okay and he beats the drum um, you know very very forcefully uh, because he is uh, the, the sound of the drum uh, expresses his anguish uh, his uh, sense of loss and his suffering his mental agony his depression his helplessness etc etc so this novel can also be read uh, as a as a social novel in some uh, some sense and the, some critics say uh, you know uh, highly illogical uh, argument it is they say that you no know, um, shuram karant is a brahmin and uh, the master in his novel is a brahmin and uh, so they don't want to give land to italit no it's not like that this would have, this novel wouldn't have been a great uh, novel had he given the land to dalit you know today we discuss this novel it has become a discourse on, on the caste system because of this and also some people say i don't want to read ramayana mahabharat there is this there is that and there is ekalavya his finger is like my god Be you know there are there are certain uh, issues in the ramayana and the, and the mahabharata and you should be reading it you should be reading it. okay so at the end of my lecture i would only say that literature has some uh, has its own social responsibility its own social commitment and uh, whether you are conscious or not uh, you will be talking about the social uh, the structure of the society in which you are born it could be the caste system it could be the class system okay it could be patriarchy it could be male hegemony um, you know etc etc number 1 number 2 yes you know <clears throat> there is relation between some kind of relationship between literature and the society and literature can cause some kind of social change and uh, some writers particularly some writers can def they can definitely you know you know uh, cause some kind of social change it is all possible so with these scatters uh, scattered remarks of mine i will uh, call it a day and uh, thank you so much and uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, because this is a very uh, great gathering uh, you know mega uh, you know webinar international today international webinar it started well i thank the organizers i thank my very dear student saucharna 243 people have uh, joined the online program and i only request all of you to take care of uh, yourselves and we are in a uh, big trouble and a big problem the whole uh, world is suffering because of uh, uh, covid pandemic and there is not a single family in the in, in the whole country which has not lost its members its relatives and uh, maintain social distance may god uh, bless you and take care of yourselves thank you so much i can take questions thank you sir thank you baswaraj sir um we are almost uh, it's all uh, it's already six now so i think we can take uh, a maximum of two questions if possible so there are two questions which i will read out sir uh, if you can answer them that would be really helpful there is one question uh, which is can you light upon jonathan swift some works related to the concept of literature as social commentary can you please repeat it yes yeah, sir can you light upon jonathan swift some works related to the concept of literature as social commentary jonathan mm. swift his correct, work correct 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 
I'm sorry, I I can't. I don't remember now. It's difficult. Hmm? Uh, but uh, I can only say that uh, um, Jonathan Swift is a was a was an 18th century British uh, writer, and uh, uh, he has. Uh, uh, two short uh, novels in uh, their uh, pebbles, political uh, pebbles, and uh, he talks about uh, uh, the society of his time. You know, uh, he attacks on the um, politics of his time, the, 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 the two major political parties existing um, during his time. And in that sense, in that sense, if I recollect, if I recollect now. And he does talk about uh, the relationship between society and literature because he, in his, um, you know, uh, Gulliver's Travels, Gulliver's Travels and other works, I don't remember, he has some three to four words, you know. He talks about uh, the kind of uh, uh, debate that was going on and uh, the rivalry between the political parties. In that sense, Yes, uh, uh, you know, he does talk about uh, the society of his time. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, so that is one more question, uh, which is, do 21st century Indian novels care about social changes in their novels? Uh, I say yes, I say yes. Not just uh, 21st century British novels, okay? And uh, uh, novels of any nation of, 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 of any country, you know, they do talk about uh, the social change. And today we are living in, in uh, we are living in an era where uh, we have to have social commitment. Okay, as a writer, as a writer, you lose your ground, you lose your credentiality if you don't talk about the social change. If you say that yes, uh, as a writer, I am not responsible for what happens in society, you will not be accepted. You will not be accepted. So that the the contemporary, we should a, a writer should understand the limitations and the expectations of his contemporary society, the society in which he or she is living. Yes, I say yes. Uh, sir, I think we can take one more question. Uh, no sir, problem. do you think uh, graphic narratives can communicate much better to society than traditional literature? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. But there are uh, people who appreciate graphic uh, literature, graphic fiction. And uh, now the children in uh, urban uh, areas, in uh, metropolitan cities, uh, like graphic fiction, etc. But, um, you know, um, there is pleasure in reading the words. <laughs> there is pleasure in reading words and nothing can replace words. Words are more powerful, uh, are more powerful than, uh, than all other means, than all other means. Even when um, Hamlet says words, 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 they are not just words, they are expressions. Okay, they are expressions. He talks about the word and its meaning word and its meaning and when words acquire meaning and when the words don't acquire meaning so i don't agree with this but there are people who appreciate graphic novels oh, thank you sir uh, i think uh, there are few questions that we see but it's time already so sir if you can leave your mail id i think participants can uh, mail you regarding the queries that they have. I think it will be helpful, sir. Okay. Uh, Basabaraj Donor, B-A-S-A-B-A-R-A-J, D-O-N-U-R. <coughs> Basabaraj Donor, P, P for private. Basabaraj Donor, P, at gmail.com. At gmail.com. If you want, you can also note down my mobile number. As a teacher, I can. Uh, I'm not tired of uh, talking to students and uh, fellow colleagues. Nine eight four five six three four three zero nine. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Repeat, sir. Once again, repeat, sir. Nine eight four five nine eight four five six three four three zero nine. It's been put there in the chat box, participants, the number. You can also take it from there. 
and a note to all the participants the feedback link is just posted in the chat box you can fill it uh, you have to fill the feedback uh, form for today and even tomorrow and the feedback link will also be posted in the whatsapp group so you can also pick it from there now it's time uh, now we are almost at the end of the session thus i request mrs shakila assistant professor department of commerce to thank the gathering and also for closing remarks over to you shakila madam thank you ma'am uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen uh, it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks and to give the closing remark so i start with the closing remark uh dr bonot has stressed on few novels and publications revolving around the social responsibility being watched and it seems that probable future scenarios foresees an increase in the stakeholders engagement prevalence of the power which might increase the social responsibility activities along around the globe so stressed on few uh, practical implications of social responsibility and social commitment which are implemented with the objective of creating shared values by few authors which have been discussed so has even enlightened us with number of studies which have manifested the benefits generated by fulfilling the social responsibility so even quoted many a times that it's the literature and the writer who can change the social and the mindset of the people volunteering in community not only benefits the environment but even a country with the examples of the landlord so even stressed that the exemplary and the principle of protection of people or the tenant or the labor can be done hence i close stating that social responsibility social commitment human values are the aspects which we need to imbibe in our life through the literature whichever we refer so the literature gives us a detailed uh, information of the human experience which the person might have quoted so i just start with the vote of thanks a big thank you to dr basavraj p dhonu for his efforts towards exposing us our thoughts to the literature and the social commitment thank you sir for taking time and consenting to be our resource person for the day sir it was a uh, enlightening and a connecting mode with the literature for our life's value thank you sir i must mention our deep sense of appreciation to imran mullah for his presence today thank you sir a special mention to our beloved principal dr s anil kumar sir for being the catalyst he inspires us to do our best and always stands as a pillar of power with a deep sense of appreciation i thank our beloved principal dr s anil kumar sir thank, thank you, you sir thank you so much i may like to express our sincere thanks to all the participants we are very thankful to all the participants who have logged in from different parts of country and even from other countries so it's a pleasure to have you all amongst us thank you all for your active participation and for the cooperation which you have now i would even like to finally thank with a deep sense of appreciation to all the staffs of department of commerce department of business administration department of computer application and the de uh, language departments department of non core pg department for their active participation and even making this uh, seminar the international seminar successful i would fail to mention this if not addressed i would like to congratulate the team of department of english who have put their 
efforts in scheduling and successfully completing the day one. Thank you all once again for joining this seminar. Stay tuned for more, which is happening tomorrow. Thanks a lot. With this, I close the remarks. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you so much, Shakila, ma'am. And thank you, one and all. Dear participants, we are hoping to see the same level of participation tomorrow, where we have Professor Imran Dullah, sir, talking to us on literature, a great source of management lessons. And we will be beginning with the session tomorrow at sharp 4.30. So hoping to see you all tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you very much, sir. Was... Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you, all participants. I, I would tomorrow. like to thank once again, uh, uh, Professor Basvaraj, uh, Dr. Basvaraj, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Take care. Good yeah. night. Yeah, good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Namaskar. Thank you. Namaskar, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.